Hey YouTube, thank you for checking out the channel. So we're gonna be trying to do something a little bit man too bright. So what we're gonna be doing today is just working on the O3 that we have been kind of putting on the back burner to the Kobe and to the special edition O5. As you all see, we've gotten the closeout video of the O5 uploaded. And basically we're gonna be finishing up the wiring on the Kobe, the 95. Then we're gonna get the plastics and things installed on that. But since we're starting to get after Turkey Day and you know how that is after Thanksgiving, your ability to do things outside is very limited. I have a great heater and this thing will cook you in the shop. However, I do my blasting outside. I blast right out there with a huge piece of plastic. I blast, fill my hopper up, blast again. Media hitting your skin doesn't feel good. 50 degrees so this week we only have two 50 degree days today and tomorrow then every day is in the lower mid 40s to upper 30s and then the further you get in the winter the less that's going to happen so what i'm going to probably be doing is slacking down on some of the blasting that i'm going to be doing unless it's sporadic so i do have some people who come to me hey can you do this hey can you do that it's probably going to be on the back burner for a bit with winter coming up just because my shop isn't that big but if I can fit it in and the weather is well and the weather is well, we'll go ahead and get those things done. But what I'm going to be doing is getting this thing finally broken down, get the bulk of the big things off so I can get it outside and hopefully get some blasting media on it and then finish it up today or tomorrow. Two or three hours, hopefully, then I'll have this done. It's noon. I do know the sun goes down at around four. I don't know if I can get this all broken in an hour, but we're going to put this on some time lapse and let you all enjoy what's going on. So we got everything taken apart. It took me about an hour. I'm gonna to have to replace a few things. My upper A-arm bolts were seized. So I had to cut those out, didn't mess the frame up, so I need new bolts. On the one side, I'm just gonna go ahead and get a, eh, maybe I have some caps here, extra caps. I do know I need to replace like two of them, the dust caps. Also, there was one bolt broken in the back. Hence my welding helmet being on. So we got all that ready to roll. But we're going to take a look at what we got here. And get it out here and start blasting it. Alright, so this is the frame for the 2003. No issues, nothing broke, nothing missing. So I am going to have to take off these little rubber bumpers right there. I'm going to have to take off the chain rollers here. But overall they're real good. I'll just reuse the chain rollers. Right here was the bolt that I had to weld on to be able to get it off there. So you weld the bolt on, you get it to cool down, and as you see, it starts to dethread out, and now we have it out of the hole. We're gonna just blast it and powder coat everything. Then I'll rerun the thread tap through there to just make sure our threads are gonna be good and retap all the threads. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be where we're at right now. Over here, we just have all this stuff in bulk. So this all has to be broken down. This stuff gets time consuming, but I don't need any kind of crazy, but I don't need any kind of crazy like weather to do that. As I stated, once I'm in the heat, all that stuff fits into my Harbor Freight cabinet. I can do all the blasting here. Typically what I'll do is I got this from one of my boys, uh, Sean Moore. I did my first YFZ450 and had a lot of help from him. Kind of modeled after his daughter's uh, YFZ hybrid that she did, but that they did for her. But, um, you know, we just have the door cracked, have a fan blowing down there, stand back a little bit, and then it helps circulate everything that way. And it does pretty decent rather than having nothing. So, we're gonna get everything set up out here, see if the wife is still outside looking all good. Yeah, she's out here looking all good, taking pictures of that. Mm. And, uh, SE 05 but we have the title for that one we have the title for this one gonna be getting the title for this one here soon and then <laughs> eventually hopefully once these two are gone well, I'll finally be able to get to my Raptor I mean we've been talking about this Raptor for like six months and I knew it was gonna kind of be a winter thing but then I'm gonna be in the same boat to where I don't have the weather to be able to blast the frame so let's see if we can get this one done today though we are getting close to about 12 45 so i am get everything out there and hopefully by one I can start shooting some some media at it 
So, all right, I probably look freaking dusty. <sighs> we are roughly at about 5 o'clock, so I know this was getting close to 4. My daggone Harbor Freight hopper, it kept clogging up. So, at one point in time, I, I used super fine media, but the very, very, very first time I did it, I used regular cold slag media, which is a little bit bigger. Little pieces on the floor, as you can see, they're about this big. Uh, we'll shoot. See those? Just little pieces of slag. There you go. Whatever. And they clogged it up immediately, so I drained all that out, so I thought. Harbor Freight Hopper was due for some tire upgrades. The cheap ones that came on it had met their end. These ones. One of the innards busted out, so I went ahead and just put some dolly style tires on it and extended the arm. The problem with that was I laid it down and stirred up a little bit of this media that was in there. It had to be a couple hundred pieces because I had a couple hundred freaking clogs. So every single time I'd go on for 30 seconds, uh, stop. Take the cap off, dump the big piece out until I ended up draining it all, straining it through twice. Typically it takes me two, well, I fill the hopper up with 100 pounds of media, run it through, fill it up, run it through, and then it's kind of iffy if I can get it on the second one. So that's kind of like 200 pounds of media. Well, I had to do it three times, which means 400 pounds because I kept getting so many clogs, had to spray so many out. But right now, it is in the oven doing the gas out. And uh, it's doing its thing in there. No real smoke coming off of it or anything. It's been in there for about 45 minutes. So we're going to let it finish up the last little couple minutes that it has left. Get it out. Let it cool down. Then what I'm going to do is tape off the steering stem bearing, like seat, because you don't want to get any powder in there because the steering stem bearing won't go back in right. And then after I get that done, let it cool down 100 degrees. And then I'm going to start to shoot some alien silver on this thing. I really like the Alien Silver from what I had did on the 06 SE, 05 SE. So we're going to go ahead and do some of that on this one. But we're going to get this out of the oven here in a couple minutes and come back. Let's go. Freaking mint. So this is the Alien Silver. Going down to our, of course, visible fin. I need a change in my life because I now don't feel alive and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh, hold my beer for a minute. I'm about to quit my job, cash in for a ticket. I'm going on a trip and I don't plan to visit. I'm going to stay there till I feel like well, I'm you can it see it. And this is just for sure. There I need you a go. big change, help me feel like living. I need a big swing, home runs. I'm hitting. But you see how much metallic is in that? And this is the polished aluminum. Look at that. That's the metallic. This is the polished aluminum comparison. So the polished aluminum is just, you know, a basic silver, but that's got a crazy amount of metallic in it. Uh, uh, uh. I like this. So we are huh, happy with the status of this frame. So we've got the 05 SC sitting back there. I did 
clean it up. You all be get seeing it posted up here in a few days. But we hung the frame up and got it blasted. Tedious process. As I stated, it took me time. Once I hung it up, I did hit it with two coats of color. So I hit it with my first coat of color and I did not usually take them out. I usually go over them with a flashlight, see if there's any areas that I need to hit. While they're still slightly warm, I guess you kind of still hot flock. I don't really, I don't need to with my new gun, but I still hit these areas when they're like 110 degrees, something like that, once they're warmer than usual. Because, you know, you'll find out that areas like in here tend to have a little bit of issues holding some of the powder down there. Getting up in here has little issues. Um, down and up in here, little issues. So I wanted to make sure I hit those areas really well. So I hit them with a little bit of heat. So that really worked well. Took it out and I did tape off the van. So the van's all taped off and we'll show you that. So this is the process that I do. I tape it off and you still can see the van there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two thousand three. 10, 2003. So the van is still there and able to be seen and the van is clear powder. So that is powder over top of this. So we have two layers of color, one layer of clear going over it. I put the first layer of clear on it. I just make sure it's super white. When you put the clear on these things, the clear on these things turn them white. So any silver is gonna be able to be seen. Go over them with a the flashlight the best I can and make sure I got everything white, put it in the oven. It took about 20 minutes for it to get up to 375 per the manual. So I do follow manufacturer's recommendations. 375, once it got up to that temperature, uh, it takes about 18 minutes for the clear to cure. Then a couple more minutes, it doesn't give you the specifics per layer. So, cause it acts as an insulator. So I put it in there once it reached temperature for a total of about 25 minutes. Take it out, let it dry, and this is what we have. So we have the frame looking absolutely wonderful. I have that sitting there with my daughter's Orbeez, but back there we have all the parts that we're gonna be starting putting on it, and we'll just go over that really quickly because I still have a bunch of things here that I still need to break down and get powder coated. Not a whole, whole bunch, but still, you know, I got the front A arms over there, I got the swing arm that has to come completely apart, the axle, the bolts, and all that. All that stuff's gotta come apart. Here's swing arms. I'm gonna send these front shocks off to get redone. And they're gonna go on to here. So, yep, Banshee one, Banshee two, Banshee number three. But, yeah, we're gonna take a look at these parts here. So, we have our tank that has no issues there. We have our seat. The seat has the seat cover that came on it when I bought it. I basically took the seat cover off to see what it looks like. What I found under that seat cover was this here. This seat cover there, looks absolutely wonderful. Also, I found another one. I think this one was on the one, one of them that I had. So I just took it off because it is in great condition as well. But we're not talking about that. We have our brake pedal, plastic stays, our shifter. I think that is the clutch cable, the plastic supports. We have some T6s that I Cerakoted black. They looked pretty rough when I first got them. And then there are the mid pipes. We have the OEM motor. This is the one that my son had built that I had did post some videos up on. This one is a stock bore, um, stock stroke. It has the V-Force 3 reeds. It has the cool head from Pro Design, passed the leak down test. It has a, poly, a new clutch cover and, well, it has a new powdered clutch cover. Everything's powdered and cleaned up. Cerakoted the cases. I mean, vapor blast the cases. Vapor blast all the aluminum that you see. This one does have aftermarket cylinders, though. These are not OEM. As you can see, they do not have the 2GU there. I don't try to sell anything and try to false advertise, but they do have Wiseco pistons in there. I think they are the 64, obviously, no bore. That's that. We have a we have our motor mounts here, the rollers and all that, the chain sitting here. We have some aftermarket headlights. We have our carburetors and our master cylinder. We have the mounting hardware and a bolt kit that is, I'm going to use on this. 
The mounting hardware is for the Alba Nerf bars. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to powder coat those or not, but I do have the new nets. Here is the OEM electronics, which are going to go on this thing. And this is a aftermarket, I think it's a GCI, GPI radiator. Looks pretty good. Just does have a, a notch like messed up there, but I straightened out the fins and it doesn't leak. So that's not really going to be a problem. But it does have the red hoses already on it. I am not 100% sure if I'm going to run these uni foam filters versus the K&N airbox. K&N filter in the stock airbox. This is just some cheap motor mounts and the, the silicone seals. I do have the T5s and I need to figure out what I'm going to do with those. Well, they're the Tumi Racing silencers i might powder coat those i might not i'm not 100 percent sure i'm not really good at the polishing but i feel like i'm not gonna get better at it unless i do it have a whole spool of carburetor wire stock bars and yeah all that's gonna be going on this beauty here soon enough over here they said i already have my student seal front rear bumper shocks 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 and the rear shock over there are going to be back red. We're not going to have a whole, whole bunch of color contrast. I'm just going to try to keep it as it should be for the most part. It's going to be a stockish build, but it's going to have just not the OEM counted tires on there. It's going to actually have these tires that you see back here. These ones here that are powder coated with the aluminum, polished aluminum. They're not mint wheels. They're not mint tires, but they're going to do their purpose. But I will say, if I was able to hunker down and do this, I have about another day or two of disassemble and powder coat to get stuff done, then I'll be getting this one reassembled. The A-arms are gonna also, like I said, do those. The bushings and all that stuff were tight, so we're gonna take all that out, all those grease zerks, get those coated up and looking good. But this is the air box. I am going to have to do some kind of you know, coating to it because it doesn't look the best and these mounts were removed so it's easy install and removal but it does have the ProFlow adapter and here is the K&E filter but my heater turned on so hopefully it's not too noisy but that's it that's all we have done like I said man this one looks good I can't stop looking at it I mean showroom condition right here this one's amazing but we're going to be getting this one started reassembling in the next video. we got a bunch that we can get on. We can go ahead and put the motor in, the exhaust and all that. We can get those things installed for right now. And that's not really going to hold the process up too much. But, you know, got a good bit of stuff to do. If you enjoy this kind of content, hit that like button and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell. Share those videos, like this video. Send them out to your friends. I have a lot of you still reach out to me on Facebook. A lot of you comment to me and stuff like that. A lot of people talk. I need my numbers to go up. You know, if we want the content to keep coming out and this kind of quality content, we got to start liking it, subscribing, liking it, liking it, subscribing to it, and sharing it. All right. We'll see you in the next one. If you're interested in this kind of content, check out the 05 SE that I did right here. And check out the Kobe edition that I'm doing over there. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow. Feel like it's going to be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn, ain't that great nice. I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy oh.